For this next tutorial, I'm going to be talking about static ifs, keywords, and keys. A static if is a preprocessor directive, and it just looks like a regular if, except that it has a static in front of it. And you can even have else in there if you wanted. This static if, as you see, can be run from anywhere, and it requires a boolean. It cannot take boolean expressions, so I could save it. If it's true, the stuff here is printed. So I could do like function o takes nothing, returns nothing, and function. If it's false, the stuff over here is printed, so o2. So right now it's true. I can do function o. And as you see, function o is printed. If I set to false, o2 should be printed. As you see, O is commented out up here, and O2 is printed. These can also take constant booleans, so I could have a constant boolean up here. And I can now put it in here and do a check. And O is printed, O2 is commented out. Thing about stack ifs, though, is that they do not work on global variables. And the reason for this is because they use constant Boolean globals. They also cannot use struct constants. They can only use global variables up here, and they can, again, not filter out global variables. So if I did stack if false, then print this, and if this is still going to be true, because that check is going to be printed regardless of what I do. Oh, that's right, you can also not have stack ifs within globals blocks. So I can put it around the globals block. Here we go. And this is still going to print O right there. So regardless of what I did, that global variable up here, check, was still printed. The stack if was completely ignored. But as I said before, stack ifs can be used on structs, functions, everything inside a struct. Everything, absolutely everything, except for global variables. You can also use stack ifs with libraries. Every library, every scope, every struct generates a Boolean global that's constant. So if I did library A and library, and I put A in here, Right here, library A, constant boolean. Up here, library core, constant boolean. So they generate these boolean variables. I could also do struct A and struct scope A and scope. And then I can throw a syntax there right there. And over here, now we have, I should probably throw that syntax there instead of a function. OK, up here we have. Let me make this extend an array to get rid of those extras. Now let's look. We have library A constant, but no struct or scope constants. It looks like only library constants are made. So if you tried to do static if struct AA, then print O, otherwise print O2. It now compiles successfully. But if you did library A, it won't because library A exists. So you can use it to check if a library exists. You can also use it to check if a method exists. Each method within a struct or static method generates a constant boolean. So if I did something like static method, oh my gosh, takes nothing, returns nothing, and method, I can now make a module. Let's go ahead and implement mod. Module check and module. And then I can do a check with a stack if. Stack if this type dot, oh my gosh, dot exists, then method o takes nothing, returns nothing, but store syntax in there else 
don't do anything. So now this method does exist, so it should print O with the syntax error. Oh. And right there it printed O inside of the struct. If I now change the oh my gosh into oh my gosh too, it no longer prints it. If I change it into a regular method, it still prints it. And this technique is used in modules like unit indexer and unit event where certain events within the module are optional. If we go ahead and take a look over here, a very slow look, we can go unit indexer and then we can go into the documentation to down to the module. Right here the module. Notice here these methods do not have to exist. If they don't exist the code that calls them won't even be in the module. And these methods are automatically called if they are in the module. And we can go down here to the actual module and look at all these static ifs. And all these static ifs have to be done because you can't do boolean expressions so there's a lot of extra code in here that normally wouldn't be in there you can only use plain old booleans here we have if filter exists, if index exists, if dindex exists we have a whole bundle of static ifs so they're extremely useful for modules and having optional extra things The next thing that's going to be covered are keywords. Let's say that you have two structs here, struct A and struct AA. Then you have a method operator here, or a method. How about a method operator? And it returns type AA, and we'll just make it return zero for now. Or how about this? Now notice that AA is below A. So it can't find this right now. If we try to save it, it will actually save, interestingly enough. Let's try putting it in the library. Okay, how about read only AAA? -A -A? And it still works. I know what to do. Private. Private. There we go. Now it will not work. And the reason it doesn't work when you have the private keyword there, and let's try even public, or the public keyword there, is because this struct here does not know that type AA is private or public. It doesn't even know where it is. So it's looking around. It's only looking for this right here. So if it's a regular, it works. But if it's private, it won't work because it can't find it. It does not know to put the private scope in front of it. So what we use for those cases is we use a keyword and there are public keywords and private keywords. For when you have a public or private something or other, you usually use for structs. Always used for structs. So we could have a private keyword A in this case and now it will work. Because now it goes, oh, AA is private. I like that. If we went public keyword AA, it fails again because it expects A to be public. If we change this to public, it will suddenly work again. Oh, I should probably have the A in front of there. Delete public. It still works but put private and it does not work and the reason for this not working is different from before because right now it has a public flag on it and then suddenly it's changed to a private flag and you can't just change it they always have to match the other thing keywords are useful for is keeping a struct or some sort of method internal within the library or something let's say you have a struct A but you want a method here, method do something private, takes nothing, returns nothing. 
This method, however, is only useful when called from this struct out here or some function out here. Function do other thing. And we'll go ahead and make this private. And we'll make it take a returns nothing. Call a dot do something private. And then we have another method where we want to do something public. And we want this to be to be accessed from outside and this only accessed from inside. How is this possible? We could just say, don't call this, don't call this or I hurt you. Grar. Or you could use a keyword. Private keyword do something private. This will change this method. Every everything that shares this identifier right here, it will change them to private. So keywords essentially change access flags to whatever the keyword access flag is. And it goes around and changes everything until it comes across the thing it's supposed to change and that won't change that and then it'll go past it, change everything else and so on. So if we go ahead and do this, it works and then we can have something like out here call a five dot do something private it doesn't work but if we do something public it does work so do something private is now only accessible within this library here you could also have scopes inside of libraries like before and then you could have private keywords for things that are only accessed within the scope like private keyword AAA You could also have uh, private keywords out here. Oh. AAA. And notice that the private keyword doesn't work here, so let's change this to a private scope. And with Vectorians, it requires a dummy scope above a private scope. If I got rid of this thing, it would die right here, unable to find initializer. It's a weird error. Vectorians fixes it, but Vectorian or Cohaters fixes it. But Cohaters has another very, very bad error that's even worse than this one. So we're going to stick with Vectorians. Now, if I do private keyword five A's, that is. How about we change that to three A's? four A's. There we go. Now I can have something that's private to this library within the scope. So this essentially changes the scope to a real private scope. So I could have function boo takes nothing, returns nothing, and function. Now I can do call boo and it will not find it. Or actually it will find it. But if I put something like a public in front of it, then it won't find it. A and now it should fail and it still works so even with keywords private scopes still do not work so goodbye private scopes so those are the joys of keywords making things internal to the current scope like this example right here. The final thing that I'll be going over is what's called a key. And a key is literally just a constant integer that's randomized to some value, so I could go key i. Notice here it has to be in a globals block because it's in fact a variable. And this has some variable value. Let's go ahead and put this syntax error into a method. And right there, constant integer i is equal to 9. And this is randomized. So now it's 7, and etc. And these are meant to be used with hash tables. So that you can use specific keys for hash tables and not have to make a whole list of constants with all their own unique identifiers. The thing with the key is that it's guaranteed to be unique. It's guaranteed to be unique constant, a unique property. 
and could even use private key, I believe. Yes. The only problem with keys is that, as you saw, they waste a lot of space. They're just randomized to some variable and they're guaranteed to be unique. They don't start zero and then continue to index upwards. So, nobody uses keys. Everyone still just lists out constants like private constant integer prop 5 equals 0 and so on. But keys are there if you ever actually want to use them. Although I don't recommend if using a public resource, people will say get rid of your keys and change it to constants. So, that concludes this tutorial.